Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker, and I actually did return to my home territory in the previous episode, or at the end of the previous episode, and we were attempting to besiege a town. Obviously that didn't go too well because we were then attacked by a rather large vassal, and that kind of put the alarm bells on me, so I thought, hey, you know what, I'm going to get out of there. And we're going to do a little bit of settlement building and try to, you know, make sure that our economy is doing okay. As you can see, my economy is actually not bad. I have around 80,000 gold at the moment. And I actually wanted to start the episode off with us attacking a band of Blood Lotus Revenge Legion people. Because obviously, these guys have been a rather large... Mm, I, I don't want to say thorn in my side because they haven't really attacked me that much. But they did attack me that one time before we were going into the mysterious witch's little hut. And uh, I haven't forgotten about that. So, yeah. And also that one time that I actually attacked them by mistake because I thought they only had three evil flame knights. But, yes. Let's not talk about that. Anyway. We're going to go straight on in here. I have a pretty good army and... I think I'm fa yes, I am faster than them. So yeah, I actually leveled up. I've been playing a pretty, pretty good amount off screen, mostly because I wanted to try and level some of my custom troops up from lower tier into higher tier. So I basically put my higher tier units in the garrison and then just you know, ran around doing, uh, you know, some small tasks here and there, basically being the handyman of the Lamoka and the various other factions nearby. There's no war going on at the moment, but that doesn't mean we don't have things to do. So obviously war is just around the corner as well. I would wholeheartedly assume that war is just about to break out. So don't worry about that. If you are a war, uh, war type person that very much, you know, likes seeing war. Anyway, I don't know why I'm saying war so many times. Let's not say war anymore. <laughs> oh, there's the rhymes. Anyway, going to go for another point in roguery. As I've said, I think it's actually really, really good. And you can see here I've got 36 roguery. Maybe if I can take these guys prisoner, I might be able to rescue or should we say convert some of them. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. You have encountered powerful forces. Okay, let's do this. All right, I'm very, very interested to see how we do here. Oh, we're, we're fighting in the snow. All right, I'm not a big fan of fighting in the snow, got to say that. I was actually on the lookout for a potential lady that uh, Mr. Vegetable might want to marry um, at some point. So I was actually looking at the ladies of the Lamoka. There are around, I think, seven or eight that are unmarried. So, you know, thought to myself, yeah, okay, fine. Let's just go for something like that. Because obviously, um, I feel like it's a bit too, uh, I, I don't know, I don't want to say harsh or anything like that, but I think it's a bit too difficult, possibly, to locate where Lotus is in time for us to actually try to persuade her. It feels to me like we probably wouldn't have a very good shot at making that happen anyway. Look at that massive damage, 200 damage to one of these guys. They really have a lot of armor. Wow, that guy didn't even, he, he didn't even flinch from that damage. That's actually amazing. All right, let's just continue to deal damage here. Hopefully I will actually achieve victory. Oh, there's a nice kill. Okay, that's exactly what I want to see. Can I get more of those, please? Can I get more of those? I am doing a little bit of damage to their horses and things. I have been attempting to level up my polearm skill as well. My polearm skill is actually pretty effective, surprisingly enough. You wouldn't think so most of the time because you'd think, oh, yes, yeah, you know, polearm, haven't been using it that much, considering I've been using my bow so much more. But actually, my polearm is very effective. It does a lot of damage and it is a lot more safe. Um, well, <laughs> let me re let, let, let me rephrase that actually, because safe is a bit of a weird word to use, especially considering you know with a pole arm you do have to go into melee range, and you know my track record for that. So safe is not really what I meant, but I'm talking about reliable. That's the that's the uh, the term that I'm really going for there, because reliable damage is certainly something that you need in high pressure situations. For example, look at this right now. I'm missing this guy. I'm not doing any damage whatsoever. And the old adage is, if you're not doing any damage, then it's not that good. You know, even if I was doing, you know, 30, 40, 50 damage every single time I attacked, 
that would be okay. But obviously, this is not an MMORPG or anything like that. I don't really have to worry about my DPS or anything like that. So, you know, it's not really that big a deal. But the point still stands that uh, Apollo Arm sometimes is actually, uh, you know, just that little bit better at dishing out the damage. Just that, just that little bit safer so that, you know, you don't have to actually aim with the bow. But, well, whatever the case, I didn't actually have to even use it here because we have achieved victory, surprisingly enough. I was actually thinking that we may indeed end up facing a defeat, but no, thankfully not. And the Blood Lotus Knights have been defeated. This is the smallest party of Blood Lotus Knights that I've seen, by the way. I, um, I was very tempted to attack one uh, beforehand that was around 100 units, and I think that might be a bit too strong i i'm a bit i'm a bit dubious about it anyway as you can see we have these guys you see how I incredible their st their stats are i really want to be able to try and get these guys so i'm just going to run around with these fellows in my uh, prisoners hold here i'm going to make sure that i don't sell them either because let's face it you know me Sometimes I will just randomly sell stuff and I'll do it on autopilot because I will think to myself, oh yes, I can just sell and then they're gone. And that's obviously not great. Ooh, we actually gained a chaos stone. All right, so this is actually one of those new resources that the Land of Seeker has implemented. And we took a look at this at the very, um, at the very beginning of the series. I don't know whether you remember that, but when we... Uh, I'm going to mediate the quarrel myself. Um, yes, when we went into the Seeker Church for the very first time, we were greeted by a minister or something like that, and he tells us about Chaos Stones, and he basically says, if you have a Chaos Stone, I can trade it for money, or I can trade it for units, or something along those lines. And that's actually very cool. So I'm thinking we'll probably do something about that. I'm going to just place a bunch of these units in here, I don't really care too much about Lamoka units or anything like that. So we're just going to be putting all of them in here. I, as you can see, I do have a pretty good amount of high tier units. Obviously, I, I probably should run around with more carrots. But at the moment, I just want to reduce the amount of wages that I'm currently uh, having to deal with. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, let me see here. I'm just going to get rid of these entirely just because I don't want to lose any of the Blood Lotus Knights. So we're just going to lose those and we'll go into the nearby town i'm actually thinking that there might be a lady here as well that we might be able to say hi to town barracks what's the town barracks all about i actually have no idea about that so anyway we'll, we'll take a look in just a second choose prisoners we're gonna just do these guys there we go making sure it's all working what is the ah the town barracks is basically just recruiting troops from here you can also recruit veterans and you can spend influence to be able to do that i have 311 influence but obviously there's no real point in me doing it if i'm using my custom troops only but uh actually you know what i'm gonna actually show you what these are and lamoka infantry joined your party okay what kind of lamoka infantry oh whoa I literally just got tier five. Okay, so now this is actually, this is really, really cool. Okay, now I'm actually gonna just say real fast. I know whenever I say that, I usually go on a huge discussion about some random gameplay mechanic for a long time, but I'm not gonna do that this time. Gonna get it done in under 30 seconds. <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Okay, anyway. You know how in late game, in Bannerlord, you usually have an overwhelming amount of money and influence? Well, this mod incorporates a bunch of things to make it so that you actually don't have those things overflowing. Your money situation is being taken care of by your large wages, and your influence is being taken care of by being able to spend it recruiting veteran-based units. Think about it. 20 influence, and I get one unit. I got one unit, so it really makes a huge difference. Um, so that's actually what I really like about that. Apart from that, uh, I did see a comment a while ago in a couple of episodes back that said that uh, you're, uh, you have like a maxed out army. You, you've, been, you've obviously been playing the mod a lot, but 
you have a maxed out army with uh, dark, dark energy, uh, dark army, I don't even know, dark demon units or something like that. And um, you have five towns or something. And once you have a town, apparently that actually makes it possible for you to make a lot of money. So that's something to bear in mind. Anyway, we're going to go into the Seeker Church here. And uh, we're going to speak to this fellow because obviously he has a Chaos Stone. I hear that I can use Chaos Stone to exchange for some help. Yes, it's a stone that is full of chaos energy. All right, yeah, thank you very much. I have, uh, okay, so here we go. So now what we can do is we can get five Seeker Knights, we can get some Dinars, or we can exchange it for one random item. Okay, so now here's the thing. I know a little bit about these things just from what I've seen on the uh, download page. Uh, you know, there's some comments on there and, and stuff, and sometimes it's it pays to look at that. Anyway, um, so yeah. You get 10,000 dinars for handing in a Chaos Stone. In my opinion, that's not worth it. I don't think 10,000 dinars is worth it. I think it could be if you just if you have like an amazing army and you really, you really don't care about Seeker Knights or anything like that. And as far as I am aware, the random items at the moment in this particular version are also not really worth it. What I would love to see here is maybe not a random item but I would like to see specific items. So for example, I'm not even just talking about specific magical items like I I spend one Chaos Stone to get the best possible sword or the best possible bow in the game. No, I'm not talking about that. What I am talking about, however, is you know a randomized amount of things from a limited pool. So for example, five different bows at high tier five different swords at high tier, and so on. And maybe some armor as well. Maybe some unique armor that you can get that only the highest tier of unit can, can wear. Because then that saves you cash, and you have defeated one of these parties, and you feel like you have been rewarded sufficiently for that risk that you've taken in defeating them. At least that is my own opinion on it. Maybe you have something different, maybe a different idea to suggest or anything like that. And you can always join their Discord if you want to make suggestions. But otherwise, I want to exchange for five Seeker Knights. There we go. I have no idea what these Seeker Knights are, are like or whether they're any good, but I don't really want 10,000 dinars and I don't really want to bet on a random chance. Um, so I'm just going to go for the five Seeker Knights. Oh my, they are tier six. Hello there. Yeah, they are pretty good. They are pretty good. I wouldn't say that they're the best by any means. I don't think they are the best because I think that the dark... What are they called? Dark Wave Knights? Oh, is, is the game... Is the game is the game going to crash? Oh no, please, please don't. Did, it, did I save after defeating those guys? Oh, phew, okay, it didn't, it didn't crash. Okay, fantastic. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me see here. Dark Wave Knight. That's what I wanted to click on. There we go. All right, so yeah, these guys, as you can quite clearly tell, they have 275 in one-handed. And if you look back here, the Seeker Knights have 230 in pole arms. That is their highest statistic. So they are already behind by a pretty significant amount of skill in one-handed for sure but also in pole arms because if you go ahead here and you take a look at their pole arm skill too they're at 180 and that means that on the fields of battle the seeker knights are probably going to do pretty nicely they have lances so i can assume that it is couchable yes it is indeed couchable as it says there um so yeah it, th these guys are going to be ripping apart any force if you have a significant amount of them on the fields of battle but the Dark Wave Knights, they are going to do better at sieges and things like that. And they're probably going to be a little bit more effective in general. But yeah, it's nice to know that this is a really good way of getting high tier units. And obviously, I'm going to be placing them in there for the moment. And I have a bunch of you know, random low tier units uh, as well. Because I'm just running around with those until uh, until war breaks out. That was the main, the main reason. Oh, actually, war did break out. Oh my, when did war... What? When did that happen? Did that happen when I was making my way back to the town here or something? Oh, well, whatever the case. Okay, yeah, we're just going to go in here and we're going to see. Um, I don't know whether she is. Uh, can I go back here? Where, where, where? There we go. This is the list of people that I can potentially um, romance. 
So let me see here. Vendelia. No, Vendelia is not on here. So she is quite clearly married. That is very sad. Yes, that is very sad indeed. And uh, yeah, we are now... <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to be going into the Land of the Banished. Actually, let me just save real quick because you know, I was a bit paranoid about that anyway. And what we're going to do is apparently there is a boss in the Land of the Banished. I haven't gone in there since the time beforehand. So there's a boss in here and I would love to be able to see if I can maybe achieve victory. So what we're going to do is I'm going to equip my bent short mace. Mm -hmm. Yes, I should probably get a better weapon for, for this, actually. Let me just go and very quickly find that out. Okay, ha have a look, see here. Hmm, a bandit mace. Is that better? Yes, that is quite clearly better, as you, see, as you see there. Okay, yeah, bandit mace. There we go. That's fine. Then we can just sell this. And there we have it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to make sure that that is marked as well. All right, so yeah, now we have double quivers as well. So this is obviously going to make everything much, much easier for us too, because obviously in... The Land of the Banished, I didn't have two quivers before. So I was very much having to deal with things in melee most of the time. And uh, bear in mind, I actually have amazing uh, an amazing bow now. So I should theoretically be able to fight the boss here. And apparently we are going to be... Um, uh, well, if, if I can actually defeat the, uh, the enemy at the end then apparently I have the uh, I have massive rewards coming. Like, really, really good rewards. And I'm really intrigued as to what they could be, so that's the reason why I'm even doing this. So, yeah. Anyway, let me see if I can actually do this. Oh, I can literally just shoot them in the chest. I don't even need to go for headshots any further. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's a load off my mind, that's for sure. Anyway, yeah, so this this enemy at the end is apparently some kind of flaming demon of some kind, and I have no idea where he is. But apparently in my previous... In my previous foray into the Land of the Banished, obviously we were a little bit... Um, well, we were a little bit preoccupied in the last couple of episodes. But, um, yeah, apparently my previous expedition, I was pretty close. I was actually pretty close to the uh, to the last boss. So that actually makes me a bit sad because I thought to myself, oh, that would have been really cool if I would have been able to do that. But, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to continue moving onward. I, 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 that's the thing. I don't think, I don't think I can see any uh, indicator on where the boss may be but i know that someone did mention that there there maybe is a way to tell but well for me specifically i don't think i can maybe i'm just being a bit of an imbecile here or maybe i just have to kill a bunch but well i i don't think it's too bad and um i'm actually you know what i'm just going to continue like exploring around here and then i'll see if i can maybe find the find the final boss well, it seems like I'm actually being attacked a lot more often now, so I'm actually wondering... Oh, Demon Matrix. Okay, yeah, we might actually be relatively close to the boss. So I'm actually wondering whether the intensity of attacks actually um, increases as you get closer to the opponent that you need to slay. Possibly? I have no idea, really. <laughs> I really have no idea, but I can assume maybe that's the case, or maybe I was... I don't know. Do I need to get over this hill here? Uh, I have no clue, but... I think that's half the fun, actually. I think that's half the fun of finding out and exploring. And I'm wondering if I actually get to the top here. I'm actually being attacked. Oh, hello there. Mm, I, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. I can, I can see a bunch of demons. A bunch of demons around here. These guys are... This guy's just running around randomly. I should be very careful about unleashing. Even though I have 45 shots, I do want to be... You know, I want to be a little bit careful. I want to be a little bit careful. Oh, it's so nice. It is so nice to have a good bow. You know, it really makes a world of difference. It's one of those things where 
you just kind of wonder to yourself, well, if I had 30 in bow skill, but I had this bow, it would probably be so much easier, wouldn't it? I mean, really, you know, it's one of those things, but yeah, I guess it's just the payoff that you get in RPGs, you know, because generally this is an RPG game, if you think about it. So, oh, RPG game. Ha ah, ah. ha. Yes, how redundant. Ah, fantastic. I just said role-playing game game. Yes, it's like R.I.P. in peace. You know what I mean? So it's not rest in peace in peace. No, it's not like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll just let myself out. Ah, it seems like I found the flaming guy. All right, fantastic. Okay, so he took a neck shot for 200 damage, and there we go. We've actually eliminated him. Fantastic, look at that. All right, so the surrounding devoured demons should, should be cleaned up for now. You get a Chaos Stone. Time to leave. By the following of this powerful uh, falling of this powerful leader, the closer devoured demons are eliminated, it's time to leave this place. All right, so I actually did gain a Chaos Stone for doing this particular little bit of... Um, Mm, should we say adventuring in the banished land and I gotta say I'm very pleased about that I actually felt like I did a pretty decent job and so I think what you have to do in these in these places is literally just to continue killing things I think that is literally all that it is just survive long enough to be able to reach a point where you can get the flaming demon to spawn and then you can attack him and then win the day and then you're going to have a, a whale of a time it's going to be absolutely fantastic and everyone's going to cheer and you're going to have a parade and then you're going to be taken under the wing of obi-wan and then you go and you just you know have a grand old time with uh yeah all of that <laughs> uh okay so yes otherwise wow we actually have a lot of stuff that i can sell here this is pretty cool all right, let's sell all of this. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. This mace is actually fantastic. I didn't use it once. So, yeah, I absolutely love that. absolutely love how I uh, didn't use that at all. But there you go. All right, 19,000. Pretty good. And we also have a war on our hands. So, the best thing I can do about that? Well, what is that you say? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, by the way, my market is now level 5. And this is what's currently going on here. Oh, wait a minute. I would like to get quarry level two. I need 600. Okay, let me actually just wait until they give me the next round of stone. And then I'll just get that upgraded. And then what I'll do is I'll pull out all of my forces and then we'll head on over to um we'll head on over to the uh, to where the war is currently going on okay settlement construction here we go quarry because we are always lower on stones than anything else so let's do that there we have it and am i damaged yes i am actually damaged why am i damaged so much did i i didn't take damage in the uh in the banished land right you didn't see me take damage in there, did you? I, I actually can't remember. <laughs> Apparently, I did take damage somehow. I, I, that's kind of weird. All right. Well, yeah, let's take uh, eggplants, carrots, and broccoli. Uh, you always got to remember your vegetables, kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this case, almost literally. <laughs> well, it is basically literally. All right. So, yeah, now we're just going to be heading on over to... Lotus's new home. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that really grinds my gears. That really, really grinds my gears that I literally didn't even, I didn't realize about that. That's obviously a new mechanic because beforehand I did not know about that stuff at all. All right, so we're going to just keep these guys in my uh, party here for a considerable amount of time. And I'm actually wondering whether we will want to attack these dark wave knights. Should I attack them? Do you think I could win? Uh, I am questioning whether I can. I'm thinking probably no. Hmm. How many do I have? I have 59 of my own custom units. Um, ooh. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so somehow. I don't think so somehow. I think I'd probably need a little bit more. I'd probably need around 80 or so, possibly, maybe something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, whatever the case, let's make our way over to the war and we'll see if I can maybe actually get that going, you know, actually get a couple of people leveled up 
And, uh, oh, look at this, look at this. I've got my first Blood Lotus Revenge Knight leveled. Uh, well, not leveled, but persuaded to join us. I'm actually just going to wait until all of them can join me. Oh, there's a massive army going on here. Hello there. Um, you guys are, you guys are really not doing very well. They, they are, oh, wait a minute. What's, what's actually going on here? They were losing? My guys were actually losing? Okay, I'm super surprised about that. All right, I guess what I will do is I will literally save them. I will go in here and we will save them from certain death. All right, I'm, I'm happy about that. Okay, let's do this. All right, it's a night... Oh, no, it's a nighttime battle. I, I couldn't really influence that, unfortunately. So if you can, raise the brightness on your device if you are having issues seeing. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, let's just hope that I don't get shot in the face and killed instantly. I do have a lot of arrows, so I should probably try to unleash them as best I can. Uh, or as fast as I can. Let's just, uh, you know, re rephrase a little bit there. There we go. Okay, yeah, this is a little bit better. This is a little bit better. The best I can do is just try to maximize the damage I can deal while still main maintaining my safety. <laughs> because, let's face it, I really do not want to get shot in the face by a massive crossbow. Because they, no doubt, have a bunch of those. And it seems like my forces are running in. I just shot one of my own heroes. Oh, that, that that's bad. That's real bad. Okay, I'm going to get out my polearm here, try and harass the enemy's crossbowmen a little bit. Oh, these guys are actually polearm users. Oh, okay. Hello there. Okay. So far, it actually seems to be going rather well, surprisingly enough. Ow. Getting shot. Thankfully, I have a massive amount of HP. That's actually what I really love about this mod as well. It actually provides higher level characters with larger amounts of HP. I think that's pretty cool in terms of an RPG sense, you know. I mean, obviously, it's not realistic in, in, in that way, but who... Well, I mean, really, what, what's realistic about this? I mean, we're fighting demons in the banished land. I mean, really. You know, I don't need it to be realistic for it to be fun. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I think we're actually fine. I think we're actually fine. I'm taking a look at the, uh, the combat strength right now, and you can see at the top there, it's looking pretty good. Don't think we really need to worry too much more. And I was really worried there for a long time. I thought to myself, I have to actually carry my weight for once, you know? Because usually, I can kind of get by a little bit, you know? I can kind of get by, I can kind of, you know, just kind of hope that my forces are going to carry me a bit. But I was really worried about actually having to do good, you know? <laughs> Although I did actually shoot one of my own, yes, um... um no, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't, no, no, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Anyway, we have actually achieved victory and saved our vassals from certain doom. And I'm actually pretty happy about that. That is making things a lot, a lot easier for us in a multitude of different ways. Because here's the thing. These guys declaring war on us, or we declaring war on them, I actually have no idea what even happened. I don't know who declared war on who. But... We now have the ability to besiege this town and possibly take it. And I would love to be able to do that. So here we go. Nice relation increases with these guys. I'm actually going to be... I'm actually wondering whether I should just take these guys prisoner or let them go. I'm thinking I will let them go because then we have more of an opportunity to defeat them again. If, if that makes sense. Because then we can literally just continue to gain loot again and again and again if we can continue to defeat them of course so that's what i'm going to do all right so i have a bunch of prisoners here i actually don't care too much about the majority of them but i'm going to take a look through and see whether i can gain any really really good ones and i'm talking about ones like the blood lotus revenge knights maybe they have been able to defeat a couple of them it doesn't appear as though that is the case it seems like they just have random units, so I'm just going to be taking a bunch of randoms, and uh, we'll, ju we'll just we'll just sell them. We'll just sell them individually, of course. We are not going to be selling them en masse, because otherwise if we were to do that, bad things would happen, and I would lose my Blood Lotus Revenge Knights. Let me make sure that I remember that. 
So there we go. That's what I want. There we are. Fantastic. And now let's just take all of this. There we are. And now they they actually took the they actually took the town. Well, maybe I can vote on myself for this. I would very much like to have a town, if at all possible. I think that would be kind of fun, because then we would also have the option, and don't don't tell the Lamoka I said this, but we would also have the option in defecting away from them with the town intact. So, do, yeah, sh 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 don't tell them about that. Don't tell them. But maybe, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're going to be okay with it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, right, yeah, right. All right, so let's just sell all of this, because we have the opportunity to do so. 22 thousand and we are also going to be choosing our prisoners of course and we'll just sell all of those for four thousand one hundred very nice indeed and uh now i'm i'm pretty happy just to wait here for some time and maybe actually lay in a pursuit course for this guy i think i'm faster than him i should be able to be faster than him at least yeah way faster actually wow Oh, and there's another Blood Lotus Revenge Legion clan very, very close by. So I'm just going to do an, a very, very quick auto-resolve. We basically took no casualties whatsoever here. I can, once again, take these guys prisoner to gain a massive amount of loot in the process. And there's 110. I don't think I can actually deal with 110 units at the moment. I'm going to have to look out for one of those times where there's a, you know... One of those uh, really, really strong parties that actually has uh, a, slight, a slight weakening of their force. But uh, yeah, you can see here that look at the Lamoka. They have very little clans in comparison to the Yan dynasty. This is really bad for us. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. But oh, look at this. They are actually voting in my favor. All of these guys are saying yes. Even the, even the fellow that, sh that I shot in that battle, he likes me. Can you believe it? I can't. But yeah, there you go. All right, we're going to spend 60 influence. Actually, I'm just going to spend 20 influence to give it to myself. And there we go. That is amazing. Very, very pleased that we have gotten this. And you can take a look at everyone's combat strength here now as well. Because it's, it's actually... Well, I haven't actually looked at this ever before. Ever since becoming a vassal. So it would probably be a good idea for you to see this. Because the Aryans are actually doing fantastically well. As you can see right here. And by the way. I'm not sure whether this is the base game. Or whether this is the mod. But I like the way the scaling has been done. On the diplomacy screen. Because I don't know whether you realize. Or whether you remember from. The previous version of Bannerlord. But the previous version of Bannerlord. Uh, this this menu was was massive. This was really really large. The font was large. The the bars were large, and it was really really um, difficult to see all the information on one screen. You'd have to scroll up and down with your mouse wheel, and that would be kind of inconvenient. Let's just say. Anyway, Nicania is paying sixteen hundred and ninety every single day. That's kind of crazy. We only have six towns, unfortunately. Oh, wow. Every single other faction is doing better than us, apart from these guys, although they do have 10 castles. Wow. Yeah. Every other faction is doing better than the Lamoka, apart from the Yan Dynasty, as you can see, who are currently doing pretty badly because we just defeated them in a large scale battle. But that's pretty much it. The Lamoka would have lost that fight if I hadn't come along. So that's something to bear in mind. All right, so let's take a look at our new town. And we now have access to this completely, which is amazing. And what I'm actually going to do is we're going to wait a little bit of time for our loyalty to increase. As you can see, it actually gives us plus three to loyalty increase, which I got to say I very much like. I, I don't know whether that's been changed in general due to the mod or whether it's due to the Bannerlord version or anything like that. But I'm loving that change. That makes a great deal of difference to me. And what we're also going to do is we are going to wait a minute. Oh, it already has a garrison. Oh, ho, ho. okay. All right. I thought I actually had to garrison that myself, but thankfully I don't. Okay, that's amazing. That's really, really taken a load off my mind because I was thinking to myself, oh, my, I'm going to have to do the old, old school thing, you know, it's like in Warband. You wouldn't have anyone to go out and recruit units for you like the improved garrison mod. 
But yeah, anyway, let me actually just take a quick look here. So you can literally spend two influence and you get a Yan recruit. Hmm. Not entirely convinced about that, to be honest. I think two influence is a bit too expensive for a recruit in comparison to literally just going here and being like, oh, look at this. There's a huge amount of recruits. I mean, generally, there would be a lot of recruits if there weren't a massive army outside. But you, you get my drift. You get my drift. Anyway, so yeah. Okay, let's just place this guy back in there. There we go. And then we're just going to be waiting here for some time. All right, so I now have a town. Let's see how much the town actually gives me. I am very much hoping... Oh, it's giving me, um, it's giving me around 900, which is not amazing, but I think it's decent. I think it's okay. And I could theoretically put my units in here as well, my... Uh, my most significant units. I actually think that that will, I think that will maybe help us out a little bit. I'm going to actually just keep our carrots around here. Uh, I actually have prisoners to sell as well. So let me go ahead and just do that. There we are. Let's just do that. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'm just making sure, you know, just making sure you never know what can happen. Okay. Yeah. So otherwise, we're, we're fine and this is our this is our new Lord's Hall and I am very very pleased to say that this is my this is my wonderful throne and I have some very fresh looking apples here as well if only we were caught fruit then I could say oh yes look there's some there's some units my apple units are right there uh yeah never mind anyway that's gonna be it for this episode I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time